The French Riviera is exactly where you want to bring someone that you need dazzled. The playground of the tax-free and the anonymous, where yachts, private jets, and supercars are just everyday transportation, where basic, centuries-old apartments have a billion-dollar view. And frankly, I'm pretty dazzled. This ridiculous hotel on a cliff overlooking Monaco. This Michelin-starred restaurant with celebrity British sommelier Ollie Smith here to pair wines. This swank hotel room with an incredible view and even some light bribery via a pair of noise-canceling headphones just subtly left in my room. It's all a bit absurd. Not unwelcome, mind you, just absurd. I've been a fan of Aston Martins as long as I can remember. I got it from my Bond freak dad, and it just stuck. They're among the most charming cars on the road, despite their flaws, particularly the sports cars, achingly beautiful, symphonic at a clip, and proportionally perfect. You see, there's plenty of good reasons to buy an Aston Martin. The heritage, the sound, the styling, certainly. But every time we drive one, we seem to find an equal number of reasons to buy something else. In isolation, don't get me wrong, they've been fantastic cars, but historically, you don't want to compare one to the speed of a Ferrari or the engineering of a Volkswagen built Bentley. Now, this is the new DB12, and Aston wants very much for you to take it seriously as a performance car. They even dropped the F1 connection in the press materials. I mean, look, Alonso's doing well this year. Good for him. Good for the team. But please, Point to this car and show me which bit comes from F1. I'll wait. While the DB12 certainly appears familiar to anyone who's seen an Aston in the last decade, it is fundamentally a brand new car. Everything has been re-engineered to make it go faster, handle better, work more seamlessly, and improve the everyday driving experience. And if I'm honest, it looks like it spent the last few years pumping tremolo. As such, Aston are calling the DB12 the world's first super tourer, a name that inadvertently negates every sports car they've built up until yesterday. Was the 760 horsepower V12 DBS 770 Ultimate not a super tourer? Was the DB4 GT Zagato not a super tourer? The DB6 shooting brake? The thing is, the Ferrari 812 GTS and Bentley GT Speed are about as super a pair of tourers as we've ever seen. So, the thing we flew all the way to France to find out is, can the new DB12 keep up, or should it hand over the super tourer moniker to someone else? Folks, today's video is brought to you by BetterHelp. I talk about them a lot for a good reason. They help. Sometimes something could interfere with your happiness, prevent you from achieving your goals. Sometimes you just feel stuck or sad. Now, maybe you've got a legitimate mental health issue like clinical depression or anxiety. I suffer from anxiety myself. Or maybe you're just a human living in the world, going through some stuff, breakup, tough career change, a situation at home. Talk therapy can help you get through that stuff and refocus on what's important. See life in a different way. That's why I'm happy to talk to you about BetterHelp, right? BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more accessible and more affordable for everybody, right? It's like in-person therapy, but it's all online, making it easier in so many ways, from matching with one of their tens of thousands of licensed therapists, switching from one therapist to another. If you're not getting uh, the right vibe from one, it happens. It happens all the time. People change therapists all the time. It's only with better help that that process is so easy because they have so many of them and you answer the questions about what you need and what you're looking for from a therapist. You can text your therapist, talk over the phone, you can do video chat. It's all very versatile. It can work around your schedule. And sometimes 
It's just hard to find a therapist in the first place. I mean, maybe you don't live somewhere where there's a whole bunch of therapists. And after the pandemic, a lot of people stopped offering in-person therapy. In fact, my in-person therapist went to online therapy and never went back. And so if you use BetterHelp, you can support this channel. You can click the link in the video description, but also help yourself with 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash smoking tire. And remember, finding a therapist is like dating right? It doesn't always work out the first time. And only with better help can you switch therapists at any time to try something new, find someone that'll work out better for you. It's not a failure if it doesn't. It's just a mismatch. And better help really wants to help you make it work. So go to betterhelp.com slash smoking tire, hit the link in the video description, get 10% off your first month with our link. And thank you to better help for sponsoring today's video. First, the big one. Though it has the number 12 right there in the name, it has not a dozen cylinders. It's got the 4-liter twin-turbo V8 from Mercedes, and we've seen it before in the lower-trim DB11 from 2017, the current Vantage, and the DBX. Aston has modified it a bit from Mercedes Duty with their own turbos, cam profiles, compression ratio, and a heap of additional cooling. Here, it makes quite a bit of power, 671 of them, in fact, and 590 torques. That is 167 horsepower and over 90 pound-feet of torque up on the old DB11. Though it's worth mentioning, it's not quite as much as the DBX 707 SUV or the outgoing DBS Superleggera. Now, Aston Martin says that the available power is proportional to the available traction something that I very much believe because I drove the old DBS Superleggera and it had way more power than traction. But something else tells me that they're just holding out for a more powerful version down the road. Its ZF 8-speed gearbox has the same ratios as the DB11, but a shorter final drive for snappier acceleration and a new electronic diff from the Vantage for better traction. There's lots of new inlets and outlets to move air through the car for consistent use of that extra power. Ceramic brakes are present, but optional. And Bill Steen has gone to town on the DB12's adaptive suspension, which now adapts not only with drive modes, but also dependent on your speed. And in fact, that entire engine is mounted behind the front axle for a front mid-engine configuration. Now, while Aston Martin won't tell us the exact curb weight of the car, they only tell us the dry weight, which is a worthless bit of measurement. What they will tell us is that 52% of the weight of this car is at the back, which is probably not what you expect given how it looks. Aston claims 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds and a top speed of 202 miles an hour. Impressive, no doubt, but slower than both the Ferrari 812 and the Bentley GT Speed, neither of which, I might add, have claimed the title of first Super Tourer. When you move in close, the differences from the old car really pop. It's the new nose, the new tail, the frameless wing mirrors, and a reshaped front bonnet with larger vents. The new headlights, drawn back over the wheel arches, are particularly pretty. There's 21-inch wheels wrapped in Michelin PSS5 rubber. It's the first time we're trying these exciting new tires. But it still retains the traditional Aston rule of thirds that, on the one hand, constrains the brand's design, but on the other, keeps the cars overwhelmingly pretty. The first thing I notice about this car is that it feels tight, like really tight. They've added chassis reinforcement since the DB11, and they have only added, according to them, about 
30 kilograms, which with the extra power and technology basically disappears into the background. But it feels very tight. The steering ratio is much closer to what you'd get from the Vantage. Very quick. The available grip is up something like 28% from the old car, in no small part because of those Michelin Pilot Sport S5 tires. Now, about those tires, they are very good. I'm almost as excited to drive on the tire as I am to drive the car because the Pilot Sport 4S was the best tire possibly ever made, and this is the evolution of that. In fact, this is the first production car to have that tire. So like, what if I just, from 110 kilometers an hour, wow, the grip under braking is really good. Now, what if I just launched it, Sport Plus, and here we go, and go. Oh, it's not as much as either. Well, it's not doing a burnout, and it does take a few revs to get those turbos on the boil. The turbos are bigger than the previous car, and they are not the same as the 707s. They are unique to this car. On the back roads of France, uh, this is a big car. It's long, it's wide, and it feels it. These roads are tight. They're small, but it's agile. In fact, I have to say, this is probably the most well-rounded Aston Martin ever. It has a beautiful balance between ride, handling, power, braking, and comfort. Every Aston I've driven before this was lacking in one or more of those. This one with the optional ceramic brakes has enough brake and tire for the power. With these new Bilstein adaptive dampers, they've spread out the envelope between ride and handling. So unlike, say, the Vantage or the DBS, you don't have as much bounce in Sport Plus. So whereas those other cars, you know, I want to drive around with the chassis in uh, comfort while I'm driving with the powertrain in kill, this one I can use the actual drive modes as they're meant to be driven. I don't have to amp up the powertrain and then dial back the shock. They've also added a wet mode, which has improved GT mode. You see, before, wet mode was built into the parameters of GT mode. Now it's a standalone mode, allowing for the other modes, GT Sport and Sport Plus, to move up. I'm impressed with the programming of the ZF8 Speed gearbox. Normally I complain about the ZF8 Speed when it's used in a super sports car. I say things like it doesn't feel special enough. And while I stand by that argument, the programming, the smoothness, and the improvement in performance versus what they offered before does match the rest of the car. It shifts fast, the downshifts are quick, it lets you get close to the red line on the downshift, it's not super conservative with the tuning. I like it. goes like hell. Zero to 60 doesn't do it justice. Like a lot of other Astons, this thing is about the 60 to 160, and that's where it flies. Woo! Before I got in the car, I wondered to myself why they didn't put rear steer. It's a big, long, relatively heavy car. But now that I'm out here on the twisties, I actually don't think it needs it. It gets through corners really well. It would be very trite to say that it shrinks around you. And it would also be wrong, it doesn't. It is a big car, but it dances.
A proper Aston must be as good inside as it is outside, and since the high water mark of about 2014, they have struggled. The Vantage has a haphazard array of incomprehensible buttons, and the DBX, even at 300 large, has last-gen Mercedes tech. Here, we find evidence that the target customer needs to be sold on driving themselves as opposed to being driven, and Aston makes a strong argument. There's a healthy combination of mechanical switches, easy to find buttons and scrolling wheels for things you might want to change while driving quickly, plus the touchscreen for secondary features. The detail that we love from Aston, that's all here. And in fact, it's better than ever. The stitching, the dry carbon, the quilting, the aluminum, the feel of the wheel, the way the seats wrap around you. Now, the buttons. The focus of the new interior is to find a balance in between tech and connectivity and the kind of things that somebody who would want to use this as a daily driver would want, right? The app that controls everything and the in-house nav system and the dual screens and the fact that there's flexibility to put this up on the screen or that up on the screen. People who are buying a $300,000 car today, they want that stuff and I get it, but I miss the old gauges, you know? I miss those beautiful jewelry-like gauges. That's a me problem, not, uh, not everybody problem. I will give them credit for finding a great balance between things that need to be on the touch screen and things that are buttons. Frankly, almost everything I've done in my drive today is a button or a scrolly wheel. I love a scrolly wheel. The temperature, the fan speed, the volume, the drive modes, scrolly wheels, yes. And then you have hard buttons for things like traction control, the shocks, the exhaust, start stop, all of those important things that you might need to access quickly while driving, they have their own hard buttons. Secondary functions such as nav or the radio have touchscreen access. And you know what? I'm okay with that. There are, of course, a couple of problems. And they're not really problems, really just areas where other cars might be better. The Ferrari 812 has a naturally aspirated V12, one of the best engines of all time. That's a nice to have. This car has an effective but shared corporate V8 that goes pretty much straight back to Mercedes. The Bentley Continental GT, especially the speed variant, has even more luxury than this on the inside. Plus it has all wheel drive, a PDK gearbox, and air suspension. Those factors spread out the comfort and luxury envelope even more than this car does. That's not to say this isn't great. This is spectacularly good. The agility, look at this. Tons of grip, tons of response at the front end. That's the most surprising. Throttle response, really good. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Carbon ceramic brakes are optional but you probably want them because this thing hauls the crumpets. And I have to say, this car makes me proud to be an Aston fan. I've not been a fair weather fan. I've been an Aston fan the whole time, but an honest one, a tough critic, but a fan nonetheless. And this car, is where it all comes together. Holy hell. It might be fair to call me a jaded crank for coming all this way to drive a nearly $300,000 sports car and be so cynical about it. The Mayborn Riviera Hotel ain't exactly digging ditches, if you know what I mean. But when I start reading about dry weights and being the first ever of something you're certainly not the first ever at, I can't help but feel like a bad car is just around the corner. The fact is, it wasn't. 
Underneath all the marketing dazzle, there is an absolutely delightful car that proudly stands on its own four wheels. You could say that for this much money, it had better be. But the fact is, Aston has missed in the past, but not here. The DB12 is fast, balanced, comfortable, tightly screwed together, has tech from this century, and best of all, has the agility and composure one might expect from something called a super tourer. Fact is, the DB12 is the best sports car I've driven from them in a long time. And remember, always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off The Record app available in the Android and iOS store or go to offtherecord.com slash TST.